Hey there, this is Creation Images, where I share my in-the-field landscape photography, the skills I've learned over 20 years of hiking and backpacking in the wilderness, as well as the insights and the inspirations that I've received along the way. If you're new here, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and ring the bell below so that you can receive notification every time I come up with a new adventure. Anyway, I hope this video is helpful to you and I really appreciate you being here. So thanks for watching. So here's my video. I want to tell you all about when I was a kid. I grew up on the uh, front range of Colorado, right where the plains crash into the uh, mountains there. And I always looked up at the mountains and I was just fascinated. My favorite uh, book was called um, My Side of the Mountain by Gene Craighead George. And I always fantasized being uh, just like that kid and running away to the mountains and living inside of a tree and just living off the land. And I knew there were people who had actually done that, you know. Um, the mountain man, uh, you know, back in the 1800s, uh, Kit Carson and Jim Bridger, those guys actually lived up here in that way, just living off the land back when it was much more wild and much more dangerous than it is now. And so I made myself a slingshot and I'd run around shooting things. And I think one year for my uh, birthday, I got a compound bow and I'd go archery to the archery range and I would uh, I'd go fishing in the local ponds and everything. And, and I thought that was enough, right? To be a mountain man. Well, it turns out that it's not enough. And uh, now that I'm grown up, um, I still have this lifelong uh, love of the wilderness and of the mountains, um, but it's, it's different now. It's just not the same. Um, now there's all these, uh, you know, regulations that you have to deal with, fire restrictions all the time. I've got all the space age uh, materials for my gear that I have. And I've got the singular purpose of just getting really up high, up on a, a tall ridge somewhere and, and capturing that amazing photo at the, uh, the end of the day. Um, it, it's not like it was before. I mean, when I was a kid, the first time I climbed Long's Peak, I uh, had a pair of Converse All-Stars on, a pair of jeans, a jean jacket, and a bandana on my head. Uh, so my experiences have been missing something. And this fall, they took the, uh, the restrictions off the, uh, the fires up here uh, once it got cooler. And I started thinking about um, doing something a little bit more bushcrafty on this trip uh, and, and experiencing wilderness a little bit more the way it probably should be. And I remember the place I came last year, uh, that uh, last October in the fall, where a big storm came in and I bailed out on my three season tent, um, crawled underneath a gigantic boulder and uh, just spent the night there um, protecting myself from the storm. Um, I actually have a video out, it's called Experience to Extremes um, that I did and I'll go ahead and link that at the end of the vi uh, this video as well. So I decided I'm gonna come back up to that same area and experience it a little bit more like a, a mountain man might have. Um, now, don't get me wrong, this is not gonna be an amazing bushcraft video I'm not good at this at all. It's basically gonna be a middle-aged man pretending like he's Daniel Boone up in the mountains. Um, that being said, it's not gonna be easy. Uh, I've got uh, seven miles to go to uh, get to the area that I'm, I'm heading to. I don't anticipate seeing anybody. I haven't seen anybody yet today. Um, so I don't think there's gonna be anybody up there at all. I'm lugging a 60 pound pack with me and there's snow in the forecast. Storm's supposed to roll in tonight and then it'll be uh, snowing for the next couple of days. And uh, just, I think this whole experience of stumbling through this is going to be an adventure. I hope you come along with me and you enjoy it. Thanks for being here. So, ha, huh, here I am. I made it to my Bivy Boulder. I'm a little bit knackered here, so I'm going to sit down and rest for a little while. But, uh, Anyway, this year, I'm not planning on actually spending the night inside. I'm just going to set up my, my tent out there 
and have a nice um, base camp, but have the uh, boulder as a place where I can um, be protected from the storm and from the wind, but still be outside. Um, I can have a fire in here, I think. I'm not sure I'm supposed to have fires here, but I wanted to build a fire in the most primitive way that I could. Um, and I, there's a lake right over there. I want to go fishing um, and maybe even build a, sli a slingshot while I'm up here. Uh, I, that's something that the mountain men had to do. They had to have some way to uh, uh, get small game, maybe not a slingshot, maybe a, a spear or a gun or a atlatl or something like that. Um, so anyway, I'll probably be doing that. But also, um, as soon as I got in here, I found a bullet frontier whiskey bottle with a note inside. So let's check that out and see what the note has to say. So that's our bullet frontier whiskey bottle. And I did not bring this up here. The first year looks like is 2020 August 2020 bright idea of a message in a bottle we got uh, Mike and Matt in August of 2022 so oh wait here's one from 2021 so looks like one person has visited this each year um, this says hid from rain until it smelled see we found this note so we wrote farts 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 this note must have been here or this bottle must have been here when I came last year, but that was October of 2021. Um, it must have just been covered in snow. I never saw it. That's really cool. It's been close to 20 years since I have casted a single line into a lake. So this is probably not gonna go well, but I'm gonna give it a try. Um, it's a little windy, the water's choppy. I know that there are uh, cutthroat trout in this lake, but uh, I have no idea uh, this time of day in these conditions if they're actually biting. But I'm gonna give it a try. And uh, since the water is choppy, I'm not gonna do a fly. I'm gonna try this uh, shiny little um, lure to see if uh, they'll be hungry for it. So I'm gonna give it a try. So I've got a very tiny tackle box with a few lures and a few uh, flies in there. This is my high tech backpacking fishing rod, what I would have normally called a fish pole back in the day. Check this out. <laughs> my first cast. I thought I got my line stuck, and instead I caught a 
10 to 12 inch cutthroat trout. Hello. I caught another one! minutes worth of fishing and two 12 inch cutthroat trout first time in a long time that I've been up here trying I think it's probably about time to go uh, figure out what I'm gonna be doing for my camp tonight So, so far today, I have hiked seven miles, seven and a half miles-ish, uh, caught two awesome uh, cutthroat trout, and I've set up my tent here by my bivy boulder, and now I'm planning on heading up that gully there, and then hopefully hitting the divide, um, the crest of this uh, mountain range, and get some sunset photos. I got up here onto the uh, edge of this mountain range and I realized that I was an hour off on sunset. So sunset is in 15 minutes instead of an hour and 15 minutes. And just a moment ago, the light up there was awesome. This beautiful deep red light. And uh, <laughs> the uh, snowstorm that's supposed to be coming through is now blocking sunset. So 15 minutes, but there will be no sunset, which is a big bummer. 
but uh, I think I'm gonna go over to that shoulder there and just shoot over towards that range. Um, super windy, so I don't know if I'll get anything, but I'm up here. I took the uh, effort to hike up the 800 to 1,000 feet to get here. So might as well take some photos while I'm here. So unfortunately I missed the good light tonight, but I'm gonna try to do a blue hour photo of uh, this composition over here. So let me get this turned on. And what I've got going on here, first of all, I set my tripod up really low. I've got a wide angle lens so I can get this foreground here. Um, it's gonna create a lot of depth um, in this photo. And then also with the wind that's been blowing, um, I won't have as much uh, camera shake. And uh, let's see, I've got it on ISO 100, F11. It's auto shutter, which right now is one and a third seconds. Um, I've got it set to a, a cloudy um, white balance. And normally I use a cable release, but uh, something's been going on with my cable re release. I don't know what's happening with it tonight. It's um, doing something weird. So I'm just gonna go ahead and very carefully hit the shutter and take that shot. I'm gonna zoom in here and look really close. Uh, yeah, that's not focused at all. So I'm gonna take another shot and focus on the foreground. And it looks like my background and my midground is nice and focused. So this is gonna be a focus stack. Since I'm so close to this foreground, it's gonna be difficult to get it sharp. So, ah, here comes the wind. That's gonna be the other challenge with this uh, foreground is the wind blowing. So I'm gonna move my focus point right here pretty darn close and focus there and it's set to two seconds right now i'm going to wait for a moment see if i can get this wind to stop there's no way i'm going to get the uh these little plants still with this exposure but uh i'm, I'm going to take the shot anyway at least the rocks will be sharp so i'm going to go ahead and hit my iso here um, way up and see if i can get a faster shutter speed and get those plants, stop them from moving. I'm gonna go F7.1 and let's see here. Let's go down to 6400 ISO, this 160th of a second. I don't know if that'll freeze those, those plants. You can see how much they're wiggling around, but as soon as that wind dies down just a little bit, I'm gonna take that shot. There we go. And let's go ahead and zoom in there. See if uh, see if that's better. Oh yeah, look at how much better that is. So there's still a little bit of movement in those plants, but uh, if you look at this one, very, a uh, lot of motion there. And the one before that is even more. So this has sharp rocks and this is gonna be blurry but that's sharp in the, oh that one's not that one's sharp in the background so anyway between those shots um, I should be able to get uh, a good blend an exposure blend and uh, have a nice blue hour photo here All right, so here's the image that I captured out in the field. And I'll, I'd like to show you a quick technique on how to blend all three different focus areas together into one image. So I have them uh, loaded up here in Photoshop. I've got the background, which was sharp for the mountain. I've got the foreground, which was sharp down here in the foreground. And I've got the foreground, which was shot at 6400 ISO, which had the sharp uh, plants down here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to right or we're going to uh, press shift and click on all three images to select all of them. Right click and go to rasterize layers and we're going to rasterize them so that we can access this function over here under the edit menu, which is auto align layers. And we're going to go ahead and click on OK there and allow Photoshop to go through pixel by pixel all three layers 
to line them up so that um, so that there won't be any blurring um, when we uh, uh, blend those three layers together. Once Photoshop has done that, I'm going to go back to the background here and come to where the rectangle with the circle is. Click on that. That's going to add a white layer mask. And now what I want is a brush. We're going to make sure it's black at, there it is, at opacity 100% and flow 100%. Let's make that brush quite a bit larger. I'm just going to paint over the blurry part of the background layer so that that blurry part is now hidden and the sharp part of the image underneath is displayed. So now we have it sharp from the, the mountain to the foreground, but the grasses are still blurred. So let's go ahead and choose these two layers, right click on them, go up to group from layers, and we'll call this focus and click on OK. And again, we're going to come down to the box with the circle in it and add a white layer mask to it. Let's go ahead and zoom in nice and close here and get our brush much smaller. We're still going to use a black brush and we're just going to paint over the areas of the photograph that have the, uh, the blurred grass in there. And I'll go through the whole image to do that for whatever's blurry. Uh, be careful using this image because it's got the ISO 6400, which is going to have a lot of image degradation, but we can use it to sharpen up the grasses just around in here. Once we've done that throughout the whole image, we can do other Photoshop adjustments as well to make it better. But at this point, we have an image that is sharp from the background all the way to the foreground, including the parts of the image that were blurred from the wind. rough getting up there on the mountain. I'm so ready to be back. I gotta get some food. I'm gonna try to make a fire tonight um, using the most primitive method that I can. So All right, so before I can get my fire started, I need to get my food ready to go. And uh, tonight I could have easily had a delicious cutthroat trout for dinner, but instead I'm going to cook the animal that's already dead instead of the one that was still alive. So what I'm gonna do here is I've got a Cornish hen. This is gonna be a disaster. I've got a Cornish hen here that I'm going to uh, try to cook. I've got uh, a, a cup of water with chicken bouillon and like uh, uh, red pepper flakes in there. So I'm gonna pour that all over. And then I'm going to try to, oh boy, wrap this up in other tin foil. See if I can keep most of that juice in there. And uh, once I get the fire going over here and get red coals, then I'm going to be setting that down in the coals for a half an hour or so and see if I can cook it. Um, uh, this is going to be interesting. I don't know. <laughs> we'll just give it a try. You know what? I'm getting a little impatient. I'm getting pretty hungry. So I'm going to go straight to dryer lint here. Got dryer lint and then grass. I'm gonna throw sticks on there after the grass. So we'll see how this works. Come on.
Yay! And nothing. Ah, shoot. Almost. Come on. smother it. <coughs> All right, so I gave up on the fire. It would just flare up and as you saw, and then it would go out and I was never able to really get it going. So instead, I'm gonna have a delicious beef jerky, sun-dried tomato, and quinoa soup. Mmm. The Cornish hen eventually had to have a proper burial because I was never able to actually cook it. been snowing all morning and I've just been very lazy I didn't get much sleep at all last night and so I've been making up for it this morning um, yesterday was such a busy day and today I just kind of want to chill out and relax so um, anyway I've been kind of snoozing and resting and listening to music and reading here inside my tent while it's been snowing um, never could get a fire started so I feel like a complete and total loser but uh, that's just the way that goes. Uh, I'm gonna make some lunch here and then I think I'm going to go out and explore a little bit and see if I can find a special kind of branch. to keep this moving or I'm gonna burn it on the bottom which I think I already did a little bit ouch oh yeah I think uh, Jim Bridger would be jealous I think he'd kill for a meal like this mmm cheesy so I was successful with catching a fish, well, two fish, which was awesome. Uh, I blew chunks at starting a fire. I don't know why I can't start a fire. That was terrible. But uh, I'm going to try now to find a fork stick so I can make a uh, slingshot. Not that I'm going to be killing anything up here, but uh, if I had a slingshot, maybe I could. We'll see.
This one might be good, but it's got this crack right here. And here's another decent shape, but a little overkill. And again, it's got some cracks and a little rotten. I just found this one on the ground. So this is the, uh, the fork branch that I found a little while ago. I'm gonna go ahead and trim it off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and trim off these uh, extra little twigs. And then I'm gonna use my regular knife to go ahead and smooth everything down. So now I've got it all smoothed out and I really like kind of this mottled texture on there. I think that looks really good. And uh, now the next part is to put the bands and the pocket on it. Um, so I'm going to experiment a little bit with that first. Uh, honestly, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. But what I don't think the Mountain Men had was uh, latex surgical tubing. Um, they did have leather. So those are the two things I'm going to be using to put um, the uh, the bands and the pocket on. so you can see me here's my slingshot and uh, I, I think it's pretty good I, I like how I attached it up here I'm not sure how I like um, how I attach it to the leather here because these knots are really in the way um, not sure what I can do about that at this point but uh, I got to give it a try uh, I don't really know what just happened <laughs> So I've got a small stone, goes inside. I don't know if I can hold it this way. Well, that didn't work at all. So as a decoration, this is a really cool slingshot. As a practical weapon to take down small game, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Well, it was worth a try. So I've been talking a lot of my videos lately about composition and getting different layers in your in your uh, shot. So you have a good foreground, midground, and a background. Um, so I was was just wandering around in this area, and I found this shot that has the uh, this uh, slush and snow in it. And then in the uh, midground we have the lake and the trees, and then in the background the uh, mountain there. And I'm, I was just wandering around, so I don't have my tripod. So this was a handheld shot. And what I ended up doing with it is shooting at uh, F16 so I could get a lot of depth of field because my foreground is so close to me. And then um, I pushed it up to ISO 
uh, 200 so I could still get a little bit faster shutter um, handheld and the shutter speed was 1 60th of a second but I'm shooting at uh, uh, 24 millimeters so 1 60th of a second isn't too bad um, and uh, let me pull that, that picture up now and see how it turned out. So this trip has been a success as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I caught some fish. I struck out almost completely on photos. I made a uh, slingshot, which looks pretty cool. I don't know if it'll work. I might uh, make some adjustments on it later on. Never made a fire, but I tried. And uh, I got this tent down. I'm gonna see if I can get the tent put back in its bag here. <laughs> That's gonna be a trick too. But uh, overall, I really was able to experience the things that uh, I wanted to as far as like bushcraft or living off the land, that kind of thing. And uh, I realized that I'm nowhere close to being able to do this stuff um, successfully or, or competently. But I'm out here, I'm playing the game, um, I'm giving it a try and I, I really think that's what really matters. And if you're afraid to just go out and explore and, and uh, give it a shot, you know, you'll, you'll never know what you're capable of. And for me, this week was about, for this weekend was a little bit about nostalgia, a little bit about uh, trying to stretch my skills and just a lot about exploring and experiencing the wilderness. So thanks for being here. And if you enjoy this video or you'd like to see more, I hope to consider subscribing at the button below. And I will see you next time. Thanks for coming.